In this video, I'm going to share a new type of slicer that you can use to create interactive reports and dashboards in Excel. So if you haven't heard yet, Microsoft recently released two new functions called Group By and Pivot By. These can be used instead of pivot tables to analyze data and create summary reports. However, I have a few issues with these new functions. The first problem is making the reports interactive. One of my favorite features of pivot tables and pivot charts is the ability to add slicers, which allow users to quickly filter your reports. The new functions don't have slicers, so I've created a workaround with what I'm calling a dynamic grid slicer. Let's take a look at how it works, and then I'll explain how I built it. All right, so in this example, the first thing I have is a summary report that's created by the new pivot by function. The pivot by function allows us to use one single formula to create a summary report like this. And this is based on the source data over here on the data tab. This is order data, so each row in this data set is one single order, and we have the quantity uh, sold here in this column. And then with the new pivot by function, we're creating a summary report of units sold by both color and with a year over year comparison. And then I have a regular chart here that's just using this range as a source to plot the data here. And then over on the right, I have what I'm calling the dynamic grid slicer. And the reason is, is because with regular pivot tables, if I go over to the sheet here with a regular old pivot table, with regular pivot tables, we can insert slicers, which allow us to filter down both the pivot tables and pivot charts. And this makes our reports interactive because users can just click on these buttons here to apply filters and uh, view the data. So if I go back over to this sheet here, I've essentially recreated that or mimicked that functionality here uh, using both a combination of formulas and the new checkboxes in cells feature here uh, to create uh, filters or what I'm calling the dynamic grid slicer. And so all you need to do here is just click on one of these checkboxes or you can click multiple checkboxes and that's going to filter down the results of the pivot by formula over here along with the connected chart. So there are a few reasons I'm calling this a dynamic grid slicer. The first is, as you'll notice, there's a drop down button over here, and this will open up a list of all of the fields or columns in our source data. It's actually a limited list, and I'll explain that later. But for example, if we wanted to filter by customer name instead of quarter, we can just select customer name here. That's going to show a list of all of our customers here, and we can do the same thing with the checkboxes by checking or unchecking them to apply those filters. Filters. And the other reason it's dynamic is because as your source data changes, whether you get new data or you just make changes to the existing data, the advantage of pivot by and group by is that they're automatically going to recalculate and show the results. With regular pivot tables, we have to manually refresh the pivot table. It's a right click refresh. There are ways to automate this with macros. However, currently we do have to take some manual extra steps and those steps can be forgotten sometimes. So the advantage with pivot by is that there's an automatic refresh or recalculation since this is formula based. And the slicer is also formula based. So any changes to the source data will also be reflected here. So if we get a new customer, for example, that will automatically be uh, reflected in the slicer. There are ways to hook up regular slicers to pivot by and group by. However, with those, you're still going to probably need to do some type of manual refresh of the slicer when your data changes. So next, I'm going to explain how to create the slicer. I will say that using a regular pivot table and slicer is easier, but if you're more of a grid purist and you only want to use formulas for your project, then this might be a good solution for you. And even if you aren't interested in the dynamic grid slicer, you will learn some very useful techniques for dynamic array formulas in this section of the video. Oh, and by the way, at the beginning, I mentioned there are a few problems with group by and pivot by. I'm going to explain those other issues in an upcoming video. So make sure you get subscribed to our channel to get notified when we release new videos. Okay, so let's take a look at the setup for the dynamic grid slicer. The first thing we need is this list of filter items. And for this, essentially what we want, if we go over to the data tab here, is for the customer name column, we want a list of all of the unique values here that the user can apply filters for. So we jump back here. This is created with a formula that's using the unique function. But in order to make this dynamic, because we want the list to change when the user changes the uh, field name or the column name up here in the dropdown, we're using the indirect function for that. And so here, this is creating the reference to that table. That table is named TBL orders. 
and then it's joining the uh, value here in 05, cell 05, with the ampersand to essentially recreate that range reference there. This is typically how you'd reference a table and a column within a table. So we're using indirect to make that dynamic so that when this changes here, when the value changes again here, it's just gonna pass that column name into indirect and then that's going to create that reference that's passed to the unique function to give us that list of unique values. And then we just have the sort function out here at the end to sort that, and that just makes it easier for the user to scan down this list and apply their filters. And then next, I have a hidden column over here with this filters list. And again, this is using a formula with the filter function to give us a list of all of the values where a checkbox has been checked. And we're going to use this list for the filter argument in pivot by. Now this uses a technique that I call the overflowing spill range. And it's a pretty cool technique, kind of a byproduct of dynamic arrays. I'm not sure if this was actually programmed into it or it, it just so happens that this works. But essentially what I have here for choose columns, the choose columns function for the array argument is I'm referencing 06 hash. So that's gonna give me the entire spill range here uh, for all of our filter values. And then at the end of this, I have N6. You can see this uh, N6 reference here, which references this cell. And this actually creates a reference to both columns. So even though you can't see it here with the red uh, outline, this is actually giving us a list of both columns all the way down to the bottom here of this spill range. And that's dynamic. So as this changes and we get more or less items in this list here, this spill range is also going to change. And we're just choosing the first column there, which is our our list of checkboxes. So when those are true values, when those equal true, we're gonna filter that down. We're essentially filtering 06 down for just those true values in this column. And that's going to output these results right here. So this is all of the checked items. You can see even if we check an item down here uh, and continue to do that and leave gaps here, it's just going to add all of those checked items only into this list. And then for the if empty argument in filter, I've also referenced 06 hash here or the spill range. So if, if there are no true values, if we select this and hit space bar and there's no true values, then it's just going to return all of the values and that way no filter will be applied. And finally, we need to use this list of filter values in pivot by. And I'm gonna apply a few filters here just to make this a little easier to explain. So we have this list of filter values here. And in our pivot by formula, I'm actually gonna go up to the formula bar here to explain this. Pivot by has an argument called filter array, which allows us to filter the results of the pivot by function. So in this case here, we're kind of using this crazy is number x match formula, but essentially what x match is doing is it's doing a reverse lookup. And what I mean by that is for x matchup, we have the lookup value. And that's the reference to the uh, column that we have selected here in our dropdown. So this column here, it's creating a reference to that entire column. So if we jump back over to our data sheet here and just look at the rep name column, essentially we're taking all of the values in this column here, that's, those are gonna be our lookup values, and we're looking those up. So with X match, the lookup array, or the value, the range we're going to look into is Q6 hash. So we're taking all those values, looking those or looking into this short range here to see if there is a match. And with X match, it's going to return a list here of either NA errors or the position where it found it. And as you can see up there in the screen tip, we have a one uh, for the fourth result. And then is number, what is number is going to do is just return or uh, change those into true or false values. So now we have this array of true and false values that's returned to the filter array. So what that's going to do, it's going to filter down all of those rows where we have a match for the rep name in our source data range. And then once it filters those down, it's going to do the calculation here, in this case, a sum based on the other fields that we have specified here in pivot by. Now for the checkboxes, I'm using the new checkboxes in cells feature here. So this is a new feature. If we go to the insert tab, we have this new checkbox button, which inserts checkboxes in cells. I have a separate video that explains this feature in more detail, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And with these checkboxes 
and this list here, then I'm just using conditional formatting so that the checkboxes either become visible or hidden when we change this uh, filter here to then filter down the list for either more or less items. So if we jump to the Home tab here, and conditional formatting under manage rules. We'll do uh, this worksheet. And I have several rules here for both the checkboxes and the list next to it. This one here will make the checkbox white or match the background color uh, so that we don't see the checkbox uh, down below here. There's actually still checkboxes in these cells here. They've just been changed to white. And even if you were to click the checkbox to change it to a true value, that's not gonna modify anything here because again, the, our list of filter values is only based based on this spill range right here. Now, one feature I really like of regular slicers is the clear all button. You can just click this button right here and that's going to clear all of the filters. To kind of recreate this or mimic this with a dynamic grid slicer, I've added this button up here. This is actually an image of a checkbox. And when you click it, it's going to select all of these cells that contain checkboxes. And then as it says here in the screen tip, you can just hit spacebar to uncheck and then hit spacebar again to check all of the checkboxes. And the way this works is this shape is just linked with a hyperlink. So if you go in here and edit link, it's just linked to a named range that includes all of the checkboxes or the range of checkboxes here. So again, this just makes it easy for the user because they can come in here and check everything and then maybe just check the item or items that they want to filter by. And one bonus feature here, as I mentioned earlier, this dropdown does not contain all of the columns in our source data. And the reason is because we might not want to have filters for things like the order ID or order date where there's a lot of unique values here. So in order to uh, remove those, I've essentially used another dynamic grid slicer over here. And this uses all the same functionality as the previous one, including the same exact formula. And now we can just choose the columns that we want to include or exclude in the drop down here. So if I do choose order ID, I will now see it right here. So even if you're not using the dynamic grid slicer for group by or pivot by, you could use it in this scenario to just limit the number of items in a dropdown. And if you were curious, you can have multiple grid slicers on a sheet like I do here. The way this works is it's the exact same setup for the grid slicer. And with pivot by, I just have two of these is number X match formulas for each of those slicers. And they're joined together by an asterisk, which gives us and type logic. I'll make this file available for free download so you can check it out. And I should also mention that both of these features pivot by and the new checkboxes are still on the beta channel for Microsoft 365 at the time of this recording. And hopefully they'll roll out to the other channels in the near future. So that's a way to create interactive and dynamic reports with the new pivot by function. Let us know in the comments below how you plan to use this technique. Now I do have a video on regular pivot tables and dashboards and I'll link that below as well. And if you're new to dynamic rate formulas or you wanna learn more about spill ranges, then watch this video next. Thanks again for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.